as, as subject matter, as appropriate subject matter. It's very controversial. And um, uh, and and for me to talk about it here in the state of Colorado um, is uh, even more compelling to me. And speaking to all of you, by the way, this is a fantastic conference, fantastic art, edu art education conference. My hands off to Adam, Cynthia, and Dale. Wonderful. <laughs> several ex experts of this field. I spoke with Perry Hollowell, uh, formerly of, uh, he was an investigator, one of the principal investigators in Columbine. And uh, I spoke with Michael Thompson uh, via email, uh, who wrote Raising Cain, Protecting the Emotional Lives of Boys. And uh, so it led me to this Analysis, the creative act um, is an ameliorating experience, particularly for, people, for children with violent tendencies. And it's better to, in my mind, and, and, and this is really a simple matter, you can either, you know, depending on the community standards, you can either allow or disallow fantasy violence. It's, it's, you know, it's simple. If you don't, if you're an adult who does not feel comfortable allowing your children to engage in artwork in, uh, related to fantasy violence, then, you know, it's a, it's a done deal. Sorry, kids. No fantasy violence. I don't teach fantasy violence. It just happens. And so, in my room, we have a structure of support, structure of freedom, and the children feel safe to express these ideas. And uh, you wonder where did these ideas come from? And um, I go back to something Jay was talking about earlier. And, you know, genetics, evolution. Um, so, you know, I don't teach for this. Here's evidence that it just happens. <laughs> So, um, you know, I've heard stories of, like, you know, pastors' children, you know, they're, they're totally nonviolent, and the children are taking their, their toast, eating the corner out, and then pointing the, the, the leftover piece of toast, at, pointing it like a gun at their siblings, you know, and they're... So what, it, it's, what is it about guns and fantasy violence? It's related to objects of power. Objects of power. And a good, a good indication of objects of power is you look at the paintings of, uh, you know, the, the compelling objects of power at Lascaux, the bulls. They're not just ordinary bulls, they're aurochs. Aurochs were the prehistoric bulls uh, that uh, Cro-Magnon prehistoric people dealt with. They were, they were like the nuclear missile of the time uh, in the prehistoric times. They, were, they rivaled woolly mammoths. They were scared of no one, and if you came across an auroch in uh, prehistoric times, uh, you better run like crazy, because, uh, or you better, you know, it, it could be curtains, because they had horns three feet wide, and three feet, and sticking out three feet. They were huge. Uh, they were six feet at the shoulder, and if they raised their head up, they were huge. And so this is an auroch. So, you know, you look at those paintings in, uh, at Lascaux, the, the aurochs represent objects of power. They were not game to the, uh, the hunters uh, back then. Aurochs were not, because they were too dangerous. They were not considered game. Uh, they were far too dangerous. So 
Um, you know, what's this evolutionary thing about objects of power? And so, um, so I document this idea of fantasy violence. It comes out all the time, and in stories it comes out. Let me get something. By the way, fascination with death. What are they doing? Coming to terms with death. This um, this is the ultimate spider from a different universe. It has two eyes, oh. and it has this many teeth. Why so many teeth? Because it chews them, and then it and it grows into here, and then they dissolve. What's all that red color? It's the it's the dissolve it's the dissolving goo. The dissolving goo. It, it, when it goes into there, it dissolves. Why does it dissolve? Because it uh, that makes it it makes it lay it makes it it makes it lay more eggs and have more babies so it can kill more humans. Kill more humans. <laughs> but aren't humans good? Yeah. sense of the world as it comes to us in, in our own way. And so uh, what I what I know I have zero time left. Um, the psychological, and this is from the book, psychological foundations of meaning, meaningful learning are based on emotional connections, coercing students to comply with educational activities, whoops, of which they have had no input in rendering them as passive recipients of knowledge is problematic. Not only does it limit what students are capable of, but it removes them from the experience. Oh gosh, I can't even read properly. them from the experience of designing and solving their own artistic problems. One cannot claim that art education experiences empower students to become independent thinkers if they are left out of the decision-making processes central to the ideas they express. Choice-based art education pedagogy is a broader, bolder approach to art education that emphasizes constructivist forms of thinking and learning, and specially designed learning environments tailored to meet the needs of individual learners. Teachers create dynamic learning situations when they harness their students' passions 
in choice-based settings. If content related to fantasy violence emerges from those activities, educators should not be afraid to integrate essential art, uh, essential learning content during the course of those events. Talking to students about their thoughts and ideas related to fantasy violence allows teachers to get to know, allows teachers to understand the context of their content. Fantasy violence is a natural part of boys' emotional development and girls, and boys and girls will flourish in schools when they are able to create art and express ideas related to their fantasy realms. Thank you.